set your heart on the breath. Because that's essentially what concentration means, to have your mind set on something, to have your heart set on something. In the Buddhist vocabulary, the word jitta means both heart and mind. They don't draw a clear dis distinction or draw a line between the two. This knowing faculty includes both knowing and willing, and the two inform each other. What you know determines what you will, and what you will determines what you know. So we try to train both of them together. So we focus on the breath, both is something to know and the focusing is something you've got to will. You have to have a sense that this is important. After all, the breath is the force of life, and it's the best place to know both the body and mind together, because the breath is where the mind and the body meet. It's the aspect of the body that's closest to your awareness. When you move the body, you move it through the, the breath energy. And if the breath is good, the mind is in a good mood, the body is going to be healthier. So each time you meditate, remind yourself why you're focusing on the breath until you're convinced that it's a good thing. And then you can work on the knowing side, which involves mindfulness, i.e. keeping the breath in mind, remembering it each time you breathe in, each time you breathe out, that you want to stay here. And then alertness, being alert to what the breath is doing and also being alert to what the mind is doing. I mean, it's inevitable that the mind is going to wander away. So be alert to that fact that it's going to happen and keep an eye out for it. So as soon as the, you do catch sight of the mind wandering away, you can bring it back. And if it does it again, you do it again. When you're with the breath, try to be as alert as possible to how the breath feels and bring in another quality called ardency, which means you try to do this as skillfully as possible. With regard to the breath, this means figuring out where you find it easiest to stay focused on the breath. It might be the tip of the nose, the middle of the chest, the rise and fall of the abdomen. Any place in the body where you know clearly now the breath is coming in, now the breath is going out. So you can experiment focusing on different spots until you find one that feels congenial. And allow that spot to feel comfortable. Don't squeeze it. Don't build a wall around it. Allow it to feel wide open as the breath comes in and as the breath goes out. And in between the in-breath and the out-breath. Try to have that sense of openness all the time. Make that constant, regardless of whether the breath is coming in or out or what it's doing. And sometimes just maintaining that sense of openness will also adjust the breath in and of itself, so the breath feels just right all the way in and all the way out. Sometimes it doesn't, and you consciously have to think about what kind of breathing feels good. Would longer breathing feel good? Would shorter breathing feel good? Then experiment. So you've got the mindfulness and the alertness. Those are the knowing side. And then there's the ardency, which is the willing side, the heart side. Everything's gathered here together at the breath. And then just kind of keep everything working together as well. Well, 
once the breath feels comfortable, then you can allow that sense of comfort to spread to different parts of the body. Think of it going up and down, the, the sort of a line drawn right down through the middle of your body, from the head down to the base of the spine. In front, in back, down the legs, down out the arms, in whatever way it's going to flow. If you find there's a sense of blockage in any part of the body, think of the breath working around it, working through it. You may notice that some parts of your body seem to have disappeared. Maybe in, in your sense of the body you can't quite place the knee, you can't quite place the shoulder. If you find that happening, Notice what you do sense. Okay, where suppose your shoulder seems to have disappeared. Well, where is your lower arm? Where is your elbow? Where is your upper arm? Trace it from one end, then trace it from the other side. Where is your chest right now? Where does it go into the shoulder? See if you can get things connected again. It's strange somehow if you do a map of how your body feels from the inside. The parts would be all distorted. And some parts would actually seem to be missing. So try to reconnect everything. So that the body as a whole feels like one big unified field. And the breath energy throughout the body seems to be flowing together nicely. And then just try to maintain that. Stick with it. Because a lot of the meditation is just this, learning how to stick with something, learning how to get it good, and then learning how to maintain it once it is. And it's at this point sometimes that the ardency begins to flag. You think, well, this feels relaxed enough, now I can go off and do something else. Well, no. Try to keep coming back, coming up, back. How really good can you make this? And what's going to happen to the mind if you maintain this state? Because some of the effects of the meditation are immediate. When the breath flows well throughout the body, you feel a lot more relaxed. That's something you can see right away. Other effects are going to take time. It's like a medicine, say a cream that you put on a rash. You don't just put the medicine on and then wipe it off. You put it on and you leave it there. And over time the cream will do its work on the rash. If you take it off too soon, then it can't do its work well. So see what happens to the mind if you just stay with this one sensation, the sensation of comfortable breath energy filling the body. Sometimes it'll change on its own. It'll get softer, fainter. This is where it's really important to have a strong sense of the whole body, breathing in, the whole body breathing out, even if it's a very gentle breath. If you're focused just on one spot, it's very easy to lose focus and go drifting off, especially when it's comfortable. But if your frame of reference is the whole body, then even if the breath stops, you still got the whole body as your reference point. And you just try to maintain that, again, as steadily as you can, as consistently as you can. And at this point, the quality of ardency means simply maintaining it consistently as possible and trying to keep up your interest in what's happening. The one place this is different from putting a cream on your skin is you can put the cream on your skin and forget about it and go off and do something else and the cream will do its work. But here your present awareness has to be there as consistently as possible. You can't put things on automatic pilot. You've got to keep tending to them, watching them. So take an interest in what, what it's like to be really still, consistently still, with this broad range of awareness.
once you've developed this state of mind, you can put it to different uses, but it, it's important that you focus on this state of mind in and of itself as your first goal in the meditation, getting here and then staying here. If a sense of intense rapture or pleasure comes up, okay, stay focused on the idea of breath, the notion of breath, whatever sensations you can identify as breath. Don't go jumping on to the pleasure, don't go jumping on to the rapture. The breath is, excuse me, staying with the breath. That's the cause for these feelings. If you abandon the cause to wallow in the feeling, they won't last very long, they'll go away. But if you keep reminding yourself that you're directing your thoughts to the breath and you're being alert to evaluate the breath, make sure it feels just right continually, continually, continually. Those are the causal factors. Now you find as you do this, sometimes you don't have to direct your thoughts any longer. You don't have to evaluate anything any longer. You just stay right there. And as you do that, there's a very strong sense that the mind and the breath become one. It's not that you're on one side of a membrane separating you from the breath. You're there in the breath. The breath is there in you. If that happens, okay, maintain that sense of being one with your object. That can bring an even greater sense of rapture, pleasure. And there's not much you have to do with it. Just maintain that focus, that sense of oneness. If the rapture seems too strong, well, make your focus more refined. Again, stay with the breath, the very subtle feeling of energy in the body. And after a while, the strong or disturbing side of the rapture will go away. Then it'll just be ease. Your mindfulness will be really strong. Your alertness will be very strong at this point. It seems like the breath is hardly moving at all. Just a little bit of vapor. It feels like it's your skin, like the vapor that comes off an ice cube. The ice cube doesn't move, but there is vapor evaporating off of it. Just stay right there. A couple years back I was teaching meditation to a, a Vipassana teacher over the phone. He was having a retreat someplace else. He'd call up every evening and report what was happening with his breath. And for the first two weeks I kept saying, well, stay with the breath, stay with the breath. He began to wonder if that was all the instruction he was going to get for the entire month. And after a while, when things started happening in his meditation, okay, then we could talk about other things. But in the meantime, if nothing else is happening, just learn how to stay with the breath. This is an important skill. It doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles, but the ability to stay consistently with one object is a really important skill to have mastered. And it's a skill both of the heart and the mind. You set your mind on the breath, you set your heart on the breath. It has to be something you really want to do. This is one of the bases of success. It's one of the factors in, in concentration. It has to be the desire, followed by the persistence, and lots of paying very careful attention to what you're doing. So remember, you're training both the heart and the mind. Because if they're trained together and they work together, you can get a lot more use out of them, a lot more happiness out of them, because they're not working at cross-purposes. You're training the mind to respect your heart's desire for happiness. You're training the heart to have a respect for cause and effect for the need to develop a skill in this area. When these two sides of your awareness learn to respect each other, 
then they can do great things.